In this video, I'm looking at two popular products which convert your analog video to digital, the ClearClick Video to Digital version 2.0 and the Elgato Video Capture Device. There are quite a number of videos on YouTube which discuss how to use it, how to connect it, etc. But what I want to concentrate on is picture quality. I mean, we're all converting our precious memories. Some of us may have, you know, hundreds of tapes, hundreds of hours of footage. And so, in addition to knowing how to use it, I think it's important to see, well, how do they do actually? How do they compare side by side? Are we losing anything in the process? Now, the reason I chose these two to review right now is because they seem to be very highly rated, two different price points, uh, but they both have S video connectors, which would indicate that the thinking when coming out with these devices was on quality, so that also encouraged me to take a look at the two of them. The ClearClick is a standalone item with a built-in screen, and you don't need a computer to accomplish the goal. The Elgato does require a Mac or PC to do it, but the end result is that you're going to get your analog, either Hi8, 8mm, VHS, VHSC tapes, to digital for safekeeping, to share with family and friends, make it easier to watch. I also want to add that I bought both of these items with my own money. I also am out of the return period for both because I got to making this video a little late. So I am stuck with both regardless of the results. So let's take a quick unboxing. We'll take a look. I'll show you how it works, how to set it up, and then we're going to get into the picture quality issues. Stay tuned. Let's first take a look at the ClearClick, which is a pretty compact, self-contained unit. It comes in a small box. We have the unit itself, and packaged with it, we have a little power plug, and it uses a micro USB, but a very small cable, which is a little bit of annoying, but it does come with the audio video connectors and a small instruction book. Using the device is very straightforward. You just take the audio video outputs from your player and you connect it right into the back on the color coded connectors. It uses an SD card which goes in upside down on the side. When you're ready to start converting just hit play on your playback deck and then when you queued up just hit the record button on the clear click and you'll see the numbers moving on the upper left. Clicking it again stops the recording process. Pressing the mode button can get you into playback mode to play back what you recorded, and it has sound too. And if you wanted to, you could use the HDMI out to watch what you played back on your TV. There is a menu system with basic functions like date and time, but there's one setting which I want to bring to your attention, and that is video size. There's auto detection and 640 by 480. I found that the auto detection may have a little bit of a stretching effect. It's very subtle, uh, but you can see here that the auto detect looks a little wider in the face than maybe normal. I just urge you to play with it yourself and see. It's a subtle difference, but I just wanted to make you aware of it. Let's take a look now at the Elgato. In this video, I did test it on a Windows PC, but it should work exactly the same on a Mac as well. It's a small unit, comes in white. It has connectors for your audio video plugs and S video. It has this strange attachment here, which I don't think you're going to use, but it also comes with the audio video cables. This just connects via USB into your computer and works pretty much the same way in that your player goes into the video connectors. Download the software and then you launch the program. First thing you do is you want to title the name of the movie. It doesn't really matter what you say. Pick S video or composite. Keep hitting continue until you see the video in the screen and then you hit the red button and start recording. When you're done, you hit the red button again to stop. It then gives you the option to trim the clip if you want, but if you don't, hit continue. And then you hit continue again and it makes the movie very quickly. That was in real time. And then it's on your desktop and you just play it right back from your desktop. So now let's do a side-by-side -side picture quality comparison. So the footage that's going to be used for the side-by-side -side test was taken with a Sony TR-101 Hi8 camcorder from 1992, which I actually did test in a prior video. Please check it out. These were shots from Atlantic City, and I'm going to alternate between the ClearClick and the Elgato. First here is the ClearClick, and this is the Elgato. 
I'm very curious how this is going to turn out because what I have been using to transfer my footage is a Firewire card connected to a computer, which is much more of a complicated process than these standalone devices. And I'll be using the Firewire capture as sort of a reference to compare the two of them. Now you might already be picking up on some differences uh, between these two devices. It would seem that the clear click is somewhat darker and the colors also look more saturated than the Elgato across the scenes. Let's compare that with how the original footage actually looks, which I actually used with the Firewire capture. You'll notice that the Elgato is much closer to the original in terms of brightness and color. Actually, the Elgato is even still a little darker than the original but the clear click is way darker. The thing you want to focus on here is which of these two is closest to the original, which is producing the most faithful reproduction to the input that you're putting in. I did read some reviews where it said this version of clear click did improve the brightness issue that was in a prior version, but it still seems a bit dark. Now check this out in a lower light situation. Here's the clear click and here's the Elgato and it becomes more apparent in a lower light situation. Here the lights are pretty low my face is kind of mushy, and in the Elgato, you see much more detail. The colors are much brighter and much more closer to how it actually should look. The clear click is way too dark and oversaturated here. Now, in the Elgato software, under Preferences, you go into Video Preferences, and you can actually control the brightness to even make it brighter because it even is still a little darker than the original. You can control the brightness, you can control the saturation too, so you have a lot of flexibility before it renders the file. A unique feature to the Elgato is you can actually trim the beginning and end of the clip before you render it out. This way, if you have any unwanted portions at the either end, you can eliminate that. In the next test, I'm looking at video artifacting. I want you to concentrate on the blue flowers in the bush and see how each device looks compared to the other. There's an interesting effect. It looks like here is the clear click and you see a little bit of noise. First I thought it was noise, but I think it's interlacing. And the Elgato seems to do a better job of perhaps deinterlacing the video or making it look cleaner. Now let's look at the S video on the Elgato. It doesn't seem to be much different than the analog. Here's the clear click at the standard video, and then we're going to take a look at the S video, and not much of a difference at all. I don't know if it's really worth using the S videos on these two, as there really is not much of a picture quality difference. One thing I want to point out in this review is I did shoot some footage with this camera here. This is the JVC GRC7. Uh, by the way, I do have a full review of this camera. It is a very cool looking camera, and it is a very cool camera uh, that was released in the mid 80s. and I shot with this because I wanted to have some footage that's even further back than the 90s because obviously the quality is lower so it's important to see how these items are going to do with lower quality video as well which may have some inherent issues and I did notice something which is rather interesting this is the JVC footage with the clear click and just look how it's bouncing up and down a little bit there's some instability in the footage and when you switch to the Elgato it's much more stable even the lettering on the screen is not moving as much. Again, here's the clear click, and it's just a little bit bouncing up and down, and the Elgato is more solid. Again, you see the difference in color saturation and brightness, but the original is much closer to the Elgato. Either one of these, I think, is a good product. I really do. I, I think that they do the job fairly well, but for me personally, these are my family memories that are precious to me, and that I'm gonna be converting a lot of hours. So for me, I wanna keep the video quality as pure as possible, as close as possible to the original. And I believe the Elgato does a better job. It has a brightness control because the biggest problem with these two things is that you do lose some brightness in the picture. The other thing about the Elgato is nice. It seems, as I showed you, to be a little cleaner, a little less artifacts in the image, which may show up here and there. Also, if you're using older tapes, I think the Elgato may be safer because I did see some instability in the clear click on that, and that could be a concern if you have some tapes that have not tracked properly, if they were shot in cameras which weren't adjusted right, because now you're not playing the tape back on the same camera you shot it on, and a lot of times the newer VCRs may not be able to get it, the tracking just right. The Elgato might be more forgiving for that. Now, granted, the Elgato you do need a computer for, there's more cables that may be in your desktop, 
but it's real easy to use. I mean, it's really just one, two, three. It renders the video out really quickly. Now, it's true you can't really do sophisticated editing, but you can trim the beginning and end, which is probably where you're really gonna wanna trim because more often than not, you may step away from the computer and you realize the thing ended uh, and then you have maybe five minutes of blank. With this, there's really nothing you can do, the clear click, you can't trim it. If, on the other hand, you really don't wanna get a computer involved in the process, then the clear click is for you. Of course, you're gonna be paying for it because it is more expensive. In general, in terms of picture quality and what you're gonna lose, I do feel that the Elgato is a better choice and I was kind of surprised how it was a pretty simple process hooking up to your computer. It didn't crash, it was fast, it was very intuitive, very quick, it just walks you through the process as I showed you and it actually is cheaper as well. So that's my recommendation. Thanks and I'll see you in the next video.